So explain to me what, what's going on when you move your arms. The sum total of the angular momentum, uh, the angular momentum of... You okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. You have no idea. Maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which way do you want to go? Today we're going to talk about angular momentum. Any spinning object, such as the Earth here, which is rotating, has an angular momentum, which has the symbol L. The, the angular momentum is a vector quantity, so Brady put an arrow over the top just to indicate that it's a pointy thing. The yeah. angular momentum is pointing up, in this case, from the South Pole to the North Pole as it's rotating that way round. That's the direction of it. The magnitude depends upon the mass of the Earth times the radius of the Earth squared. And there's a numerical factor, which I can't remember, but is a first year calculation to do, and you don't want to know about the numbers, but it's proportional to that. And it keeps on going unless there's some force of friction on the side, which I'm providing with this blue tack by getting it either to slow down like that or to speed up. And it's this sideways force, whoops. The Earth moved. The Earth moved for me, yeah. See if I can get it to work. Now I have to take it out and put it back in again. Can you do this, George? <laughs> you did it before. All right, I'll start again. You're filming, aren't you? No. You're lying. Tell. So this is any rotating object, and we're going to illustrate it further by looking at bicycle wheels. One of the reasons you don't fall off a bike, or I hope you don't fall off a bike, is when you're pedalling it, there is angular momentum associated with the rotation of the wheels. You've got the key, George? This is a bicycle wheel, which, before we start, we'll leave it stationary and see what happens if I dangle it from a string. I'll dangle it from this side, I think. And, of course, it wants to fall out of it, but if I keep it like that, the string will hold it vertically. It doesn't want to remain like that at all. But if my beautiful lady assistant, George, would like to get that spinning, I'm not allowed to do dangerous work like George. You? Thank you. OK. So now I'm going to hold it by putting this string over here and dangling it down. And you see, if I'd left it without the spinning, it would want to stay in the horizontal plane, but now, actually, the angular momentum wants to keep in the same direction. Unfortunately, it tries to tip over. When it tries to tip over, it goes around in a circle. But it doesn't want to fall off. This is a very, very stable arrangement. Well, if you're riding a bike, uh, and the bike is going along, and you suddenly tip over, it doesn't really want to carry on in the same direction. It, it would prefer to revert back to the vertical. And you design the bike wheels and the front forks in such a way that it, it leans you back into the right direction. So the angular momentum tries to remain constant going down the axis and tipping it over. Well, it doesn't like being budged away from the direction it's moving. So the faster you go, the more stable you are. If you're trying to do it standing still, completely stationary, it is quite difficult to balance on a bicycle and completely impossible on a monocycle. Angular momentum is conserved unless there's some friction which will get things to slow down. So if you get an atom in a particular state, it will stay in that state with a particular value of angular momentum. Or if you have a bicycle wheel that's going round and there's no friction, it will carry on rotating forever. Or if the Earth spins round, if there's no friction, the Earth will keep spinning around forever. There is going to be a little bit of friction because of the air molecules rubbing against the Earth or the water rubbing against the, the, the shores. And there will be some friction that tries to slow it down. But that apart, it will keep going and keep going well, at least for my lifetime, which is all that matters as far as I'm concerned. I'm sitting on a chair, which it just rotates very easily. So I am actually a spinning object at the moment. And I don't want to be a spinning object. I want to make sure that my angular momentum is zero. And then George is going to spin the thing up so much that there's going to be a huge amount of angular momentum. So I start again, and there's angular momentum this way. But I'm not going to worry about There's no angular momentum about this axis vertically. But if I switch this way, this is now rotating around. And I have to go the other way in order to keep the total angular momentum constant. And now I've turned it back, and I'm going back the other way. And I can keep, that is fun, keep turning it over. And the total angular momentum remains fixed and turning it over again, and I come backwards. So 
the sum total of my angular momentum about this axis and the wheel's angular momentum is the same, apart from the fact that there's a bit of friction. A bit of friction will slow the wheel down. But even when I'm at this stage, I can turn it the other way, and the angular momentum about the vertical axis is constant. All right, all right. So what are you doing there? Now I'm going to show you that the angular momentum also depends on how I distribute my mass. Now, my mass is distributed in my self-like body, um, uniformly, I wish. Um, and I'm going to illustrate the effect of distributing mass by carrying a kilogram weight on either end. So, George, would you like to rotate me around with my arms out? And it's the moment of inertia that depends on the distribution of mass and how far it is away from the centre of axis. Ah! And if I bring these masses in, the angle of velocity will increase dramatically and I'm going to be sick. And then, oh, can you spin me? The, oh, dear. What is a professor when he spins? Oh. The sum total of the angular momentum, uh, the angular momentum of... Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. You have no idea. Maybe we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which way do you want to go? So what happened there was, after I was sick, um, start again. And what happened there was that as I put these weights out, just like an ice skater who's spinning, putting her arms out, uh, uh, you rotate around, and with the arms out, you have a lot of uh, angular momentum associated with these masses far from your body, which is part of your moment of inertia. Now, as you bring your arms in, as I brought these masses in, so your angular momentum remains constant. The moment of inertia goes down because you've brought them in closer and you speed up and you really get giddy. I don't know how those ice dancers do it because they somehow lean their head back and don't get giddy and, and they go around like that forever. But, oh dear, I'm not really feeling myself. 